he's really controlling the ball. 55.6 seconds foul left. Cordero. And that last foul by Ed Cordero just might have driven the last nail on the coffin of Beerhausen for tonight anyway. And there's another timeout called by Baby DeLupan. This is not to add insult to injury, I can imagine. Baby DeLupan just wants to ensure this victory by making certain that did. Baby DeLupan was simply putting the finishing touches to ensure victory number two here for great taste, which is only 55.6 seconds away. The score, 104 to 95. In the limelight is Frankie Lim. He in tandem with Ricky Brown really spelled disaster for Beerhausen tonight. Frankie Lim, it might be said, is probably playing one of the finest games of his life tonight. Well, that's and really going to hurt Beerhausen's chances. Joey Coppio comes down with the offensive rebound. Looks like Beerhausen might have to foul again. But then all that would be academic in the light of the fact that there's only 40 ticks left. And Joey Carpio. Well, there's seven seconds left on the shot clock. Let's see if Ricardo can get a shot off. The last thing Beerhausen wants to do in this game is to foul Ricky Brown, but that's exactly what they did. With time pass running out on great pace, Ito Yasgera just had to commit the foul. Oh, no, it was Emerly Gaspis' foul. Actually, it was a double team thrown on Ricky Brown. It was Emerly Gaspis' hugging foul that was spotted. Well, Lascara gave Ricardo Brown a head hug that time. <laughs> right. <laughs> They'll do anything to stop him. He's been red hot at his 45th point in the ball game. I suspected that head hug wasn't exactly a demonstration of love for Ricky Brown. No, I don't think so. All right, 107 to 95, 31 seconds left. I guess the outcome of this game is a foregone conclusion. The only unsettled issue now is the final tally, and Herrera did something about that. At least he wants Beerhausen to crack into the century barrier. They're only three points away from it, but they're a good 10 points down. 17 seconds to go. Joey Carpio misses a point blank range. Paul Herrera comes down with a rebound, and Joey Carpio winds up or winds up with a bear hug on Paul Herrera. Now, what he did that for, I can't imagine. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's going to be a deliberate foul because they're going to the line for two shots. Because Great Taste is not in a penalty. At least the scoreboard says they don't have any team fouls, which I know isn't true. No, it's not true at all. And Joey Carpio, I still cannot explain why he had to commit that last foul unless he wanted to make a martyr of himself. That was his sixth and last foul. Well, it had to be a deliberate foul because Great Taste only has four team fouls. Well, that was their fifth. Herrera comes through with his first charity. It's 107.98. Well, a consolation for Beerhausen here is that they just might break the century barrier. And they're only one point away from that goal. 107 to 99, 12 seconds left. And we've got a foul in the backcourt committed on Ricardo wow. Brown by Ito Yasgera. Nice karate chop by Ascara that time. It's going to send Ricardo Brown to the line. And were it not for the fact that Beerhausen, or rather Great Pace, already has this game in the bag, I can imagine it would have elicited a bit more of a reaction from Ricky Brown. So Ricky simply shook his head. Well, Ricky's 10 for 10 from the foul line, makes that 11 for 11. I guess he figures he's going to make Ascara pay from the foul line. 108 to 99. Only 12.4 seconds to go. Well, this game really has lived up to its billing as a championship affair. And this score, lopsided as it may seem right now, is really deceptive. It does not reflect the tremendous struggle that went on for about 95% of the game. And here's Mon Fernandez coming out of his shell after the long silence and missing the 15-foot jump shot. 